Today is all about dim sum, a culinary minefield if you don't know what you're doing. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that will help you look and eat like a pro when ordering, and then share my recipe for classic siumai dumplings. Hey guys, I am Jet Tila, and this is Ready Jet Cook, where I show you how to make some of my favorite Asian dishes from pantry to plate. Let's get started. So when going out to eat dim sum at a restaurant, it's an amazing dance between you and the restaurant because there's so many little ceremonial touch points that really kind of tell the restaurant how experienced you are. And I want to get you there. Basically, I want to show you how to eat like a pro in the dim sum restaurant. The first point is tea. In Southern China, dim sum is also known as yum cha, which literally translates to drinking tea because it's part of eating this type of meal. So let's focus on tea for a second. Immediately when you sit down, the server is gonna ask you what kind of tea you want. And you actually have a choice between four types of tea. And they vary just like wine, from a very light tea, which is herbal tea, chrysanthemum tea. Then we get into a jasmine tea. Then we get into a semi-fermented tea. And then we get into the fully fermented roasted tea, which is like pu'er. So your first way to tell the server you know what you're doing is order the appropriate tea. What they're gonna try to do to you is just drop jasmine. I mean, you're gonna be like, no, 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 garçon. Now that we're actually into the tea, a lot of etiquette here. Firstly, never pour for yourself first. You always wanna pour for somebody else. And you wanna go as high as you can on the cup. Another tip is, let's say one person has drank their tea halfway down, you're gonna fill their tea, and even though everyone else's tea might be full, you wanna just top it off just a tiny bit. Super good manners. When someone actually pours your tea, you don't have to say the words thank you. I'm gonna show you how a pro does it. Take your index finger next to your teacup where they've just poured and just tap a few times. And that means thank you very much. Here's other tips when it comes to tea. When you've poured down the tea and you have very little left and you need more water, you don't say, excuse me, excuse me, more water, please. You do this cool little trick right here. You take the teapot lid and you place it off center somewhere on the teapot and magically the server comes in and fills your tea. So there it is, a few very cool tea tips for the dim sum restaurant to your health. Let's move on to chopstick etiquette. All right, we need to talk about chopstick etiquette in the dim sum restaurant. So you're gonna be using chopsticks for most of your meal. The number one rule when it comes to chopsticks is never put your chopsticks vertically in rice. I, just, I can't even like pretend to do that, but I'm gonna do that just to, to prove a point, okay? This is ultimate bad luck because we do this at funerals. I'm sorry to get dark on you, but I wanna prep you for a really great dim sum experience. So never ever put your chopsticks vertically in rice. Flat on the table is acceptable. On the side of the rice bowl is acceptable. Just make sure they're never vertical. And if you wanna be polite, if you're eating in a group, you eat with this side of the chopsticks, if you must grab food in the middle, you may turn them over to grab a bit of food to put back on your plate. There it is, guys. Some really great dim sum etiquette. Let's get into making siumai dumplings. To make the siumai dumplings, I need to reconstitute these black mushrooms. At the store, they might be called black mushrooms in the bag. They also could be called shiitake mushrooms. But what we wanna do is to just soak them in very hot water to get them reconstituted. The mushrooms will reconstitute anywhere from five to 15 minutes. Let's get on the proteins. First thing I'm gonna need is my pork and shrimp. You know what, I like a very coarse shrimp. So these are peeled and deveined. And if you do have the shrimp tails on, here's a little tip on how to get as much shrimp meat as possible. So above the tail and above the barb, you're gonna pinch in very tight until you hear a little crack and then wiggle and you've got a ton of shrimp right there. So this goes away, and I've got all the shrimp I need. I'm a huge fan of rough chopping because, you know, I want a very coarse feel in the siumai dumpling. Siumai literally translates to cook and sell, which means, yo, hurry up and get this food out there as quick as possible. Some people have put this in the food processor. I think it gets it too fine. I'm not trying to make a meatball. I want a very coarse feeling filling. It's kind of like when you grind uh, beef for hamburger. If you go too fine, it gets a little mealy. The same 
same thing happens in the dim sum dumplings. So we're gonna marry the shrimp and the ground pork in this bowl, and I'm gonna do a quick hand wash. So now I've gotta marry my pork in, and this is just a coarse ground pork. Again, if you have a butcher and you can choose, coarse ground means it's put through the grinder one time through large dyes. So that's always my preference in ground beef, ground pork, chicken, turkey, all that good stuff. All right, we're gonna add a touch of sugar. And I like using cornstarch because when cornstarch actually comes to temper, it gets heated up, it gets kind of sticky and it pulls everything together. So a bit of cornstarch. Next, we're gonna do salt, some vegetable oil, and that's gonna depend on the leanness of the pork. If you've got a really nice fatty pork, I have a leaner pork here, so I'm gonna do a little more vegetable oil. Next is gonna be oyster sauce. Oyster sauce is that foundational kind of brown sauce taste. It's got a nice balance of salt, savory, and sweet. And sesame oil, to me, is a flavoring and not a cooking oil. I don't ever want to torture it with high heat, like starting a walk with it. I want to flavor things with it. And then finally, give it a little kiss of white pepper. White pepper has kind of the spice of pepper, but more of the floral qualities when you remove that outer skin. So let's check on those mushrooms to see how they're looking. So look at that. They've actually increased in size considerably. And don't chuck that soaking liquid, man. Like it is like liquid gold. Vegetarians, vegans, and Buddhist monks would use that soaking liquid as base stock for any soups. It's a phenomenal plant-based stock. Remember, these mushrooms were in hot water, so do be careful when, when manipulating them. But I just want to squeeze out a little bit of moisture out of these. So I can chop them up. And I'm not looking for anything fancy, just a small dice. So let's go a long ways first. And if you're trying to adapt this into a plant-based dish, you could use actually coarse tofu for the meat part and then use even more mushrooms than I'm using here. So I'm only gonna need a few. Now I'm gonna take these mushrooms and cut them perpendicular just into small dice. They add a delicious kind of chewy texture and a very meaty kind of flavoring because mushrooms are full of that umami that we love, that savoriness, and that's it. So the goal here really is just to get this filling thoroughly mixed through. And you know, by itself, as we're using it, it's phenomenal for siu mai. You could adapt this into making a pot sticker, but it's basically a farce. French call any filling farce, and you can use this for anything you want. Another good mixing tool would be your mixer with a paddle attachment. That gets the job done quick, especially if you're making a lot. That's it for filling, friends. So let's just cover. You can let all the flavors marinate together for four hours all the way to overnight in the fridge. I've already done one ahead, so I'm gonna use that. All right, so we have filling. All I need to bring to the party is the dumpling skins and just a little water to help seal it all. When you go to the store, you can look for something called siu mai skins. They could be wonton skins or even dumpling skins. All of them will work. Here's where you test your dexterity. I'm gonna show you the technique. And like anything, you know, after you practice a few, you're gonna get the hang of making siu mai dumplings. So placing the skin in your weak hand, you're gonna take a little more than a tablespoon of the filling, place it in the center, and watch what I'm doing. I'm actually making an okay symbol and slide that filling into that O of the OK. And then I'm gonna rotate. I'm literally spinning the dumpling in a circle as I'm pushing down the filling. It sounds complicated, but once you do a few, you're gonna get the hang of it really fast. So with the filling pressed down and rotated, the last thing I need to worry about is the bottom. It's rounded and I need to flatten it, kind of to like make a drum. Think about what you're making is a drum. If you need a little water, you could actually take a little water and just seal the edges or the pleats that are sitting on top of the, kind of the open plates. Just take a, a little bit of water and then seal those pleats shut. If I've done my job correctly, that's what you're looking for right there. A perfect little siu mai. I also call it a drum dumpling because I think that's what it looks like. 
So the story of dim sum is pretty cool. Way back in the days, to get from point A to point B in China took a very long time. It's a gigantic country. So enterprising Chinese restaurateurs created these little tea houses. You had a place to relax and get a snack between point A and point B. The two fastest methods of cooking food is steaming and frying. So you would have these restaurants where you can get a really quick rest, drink some tea, hydrate, caffeinate, and they're like any good restaurateur, how do I bump that check up? What kind of food should I serve? They created these fast, small bites that were really quick to get out to the guest. Thus, dim sum was created. And that's also why it's called yum cha, because it's the perfect time to drink a little tea and get your little snack. And, you know, and, and like most dishes that we make on the show, this dish really ties back to my childhood. I was an atypical Asian child. I had a lot of problems kind of learning in school. I had no idea, but I had an undiagnosed uh, learning disability. My grandma never gave up on me. She knew if I wasn't gonna do well in school, she was gonna put me in a trade, and our trade in our family was cooking. So from a very young age, Grandma and I would take the bus from uh, East Los Angeles to Chinatown, and our ritual was to go eat dim sum together, get some sweets on the way home, shop for groceries, and then cook dinner. And, and those thousands and thousands of meals, you know, really saved my life because it gave me direction. This woman would not give up on me, and it really taught me the work ethic to get me here today. So, um, you know, I'm gonna drink a little tea and remember Grandma when eating these siu mai. So all the dumplings are done, and now we're gonna shift into steamer mode. These are just simple bamboo steamers. You can find them at almost any home store. You can even get them on the interweb because they're so light and easy to ship. What you wanna do is heat up a pot about the same diameter as a steamer so you could rest it on top. You're gonna wanna set up a liner for these dumplings. And you have two choices here. Just a real simple parchment paper bottom is fine, or you can kind of go old school and use some cabbage leaves. And all I've done is kind of cut the bottoms off the cabbage leaves, and if I find one or two, that I like, I'm gonna flatten them out and then use them as a liner. Make sure to leave room around the steamer so the steam can actually come up. For a little insurance, a little pan spray never hurts. We're gonna lay these on top. So depending on the size of the siu mai, they'll probably take about four to eight minutes. And, and then again, that's also dependent on the size of the skins. So that goes over boiling water in our pan. Steam is getting pushed up from the bottom and we're gonna let those steam four to eight minutes. So these have been cooking away, and I think presenting in the steamer is the best presentation, because that's what you would get in the dim sum restaurant. So let's see, it's that angel singing moment. Ah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Look at that. The doneness check is just a spring back. If you push down and they're nice and solid, you're good to go. Check it out. You could be making siu mai in your own home. Now the last kind of choose your own adventure option is on the sauces. In the dim sum restaurant, you're gonna have soy sauce, hot mustard, or chili. There's no wrong way to do it. I kind of take a little bit of everything and that's how I like it. But you could eat these plain or sauce them up any way you want. I love these siu mai because it really is everything you want in one little bite. The savoriness of the pork and the mushrooms, a clean seafood taste of the shrimp. I mean, these are so much fun. The chewiness and the mouthfeel. It really is the perfect balance of texture and delicious flavors. This really brings me back to my childhood. These are absolutely my favorite dim sum dumplings. So there you have it, friends. Siu mai at home, plus some etiquette when you're going out to eat. I hope I've inspired you to go out and eat dim sum and then come back and make it at home. And we'll see you next time on Ready, Jet, Cook. <laughs>